Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where the Orchard of Wisdom shows are at your fingertips. It ignites your soul, your heart, your spirit, your mind, and your body with illumination from people who have made the journey before you. They're here now to help you on your journey, on your path of self-discovery. We are funded by you, the audience, and the people we interview. If you wish to support us, please go to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com and press on our Fund Action button. Anything is appreciated. We would like you to sit back and enjoy the shows. Here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Quantum Spirituality right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest is Drew. Drew, help me with your surname. <laughs> Makahi. <laughs> Makahi. And we've got a great show for you here today. He says that 2022 is the phoenix. Does that mean we're going to burst into flames and be reborn? The mythical bird who celebrates the ending of one life cycle by setting itself on fire, re-emerging from its ashes is stronger, smarter, and more powerful than it was before. What are the ashes that we are re-emerging from? And as we head into a new cycle of 22, the unconscious-based economy society of conflict, competition, and scarcity. While the unconsciously-based economy society has done a good job of leading us into one of the most advanced societies in history, it's time to let that cycle burn up, turn to ashes. As a species, we can begin a new life, a new life cycle, stronger, smarter, and more powerful than ever before. What is this new life cycle and which is it being called forth and are we ahead or be are we head into 2022 and beyond and uh, we there's a beautiful article here that, that he's written i do invite you to come and um look at the article and read some of his other articles they really are lovely and they're very very kind of thought provoking and um that's what we need right now isn't it is that we need um i always have a word every year and this year is ignition put yourself into gear, let's get going, right? And uh, we need this year, and it's the year of the tiger too, and the tiger is about movement. It's the water tiger, which means that it's wonderful conduit and peaceful, but it is the year of achievement and getting moving and making those changes. So I like the analogy of the, you know, the, uh, the phoenix bursting into flames, but coming back wiser, because that's what we do every lifetime. We come back wiser, and it, each lifetime is an experience of that. So where do you get the the phoenix and an analogy from through well that just sort of came to me mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's always the best ones <laughs> yeah i mean it, it uh it was just from the energy mm -hmm. you know this was back in december that i wrote that um but starting in and i'm not the only one who knows how to read energy and right reads all this stuff obviously uh but starting around september um it really started ramping up and you could just feel and I, you know, I think that as I stay in that article, I think that uh, the pandemic just really ignited the, fl the flip the switch. It mm. just turned it on in a bigger way than, than, you know, maybe would have happened without the pandemic. Um, you know, there's no saying for sure. I mean, I wrote a, a blog in 2019 that basically predicted the pandemic. It wasn't the pandemic, but anybody that could read yes. energy knew that yes. there was something that was going to stir up the pot something mm -hmm. had to change because uh just you know consciousness has had an influence on humanity throughout our history mm -hmm. and it has been i mean it's who we are it's where we come from without getting into a lot of detail about <laughs> that and it's been constantly expanding and constantly expanding in the last oh, say 15 or 20 years, it's really started to ramp up. And starting around 2017, there was a lot of us that, that have been in the energy world and feeling stuff and going, you know, something's happening. Yes. Something, something's pulling people. And every adult's starting to get this experience. And the consciousness has just been expanding and it's asking everybody to come with it. And if you don't go with it, you're probably not going to feel great. Yeah. Yep get yeah. left behind yeah, really. get left it, it really is about that momentum I, I four and a half years ago i was given a saying the universe is going to shake us up to wake us up to step up 
change it up and grow up, grow up vibrationally, but also grow up as a human race. Yeah. Um, because we think everything is just about us and here to serve as we are the be all and the end all. If we're such a smart species, why are we destroying the planet and each other? Um, so if the consciousness has to change, and it is in the process of change and the pandemic, I agree with you, was a was the shake up. Um, people kind of went more in, they had more time to go in and kind of look at what's really important in my life. What do I really want to feed? What do I want to seed, water and nurture to grow? And of course, then you have the other people who have to argue about everything. And, you know, they are the people that haven't attached themselves to this consciousness, haven't felt the, those vibrations. And they could essentially will be left behind because this whole new consciousness isn't about angst, is it? It's quite simply about kind of a loving, good vibrations. Yeah, I mean, we're basically shifting from what I call in terms of unconscious based society to a consciousness based mm -hmm. society. And the unconsciousness based society is really simple. It's, you know, and there's nothing I'm not saying anything bad about it. It got mm -hmm. us to where we are, but look where we are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> yes. Do we want to be here? You know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, um, you know, we just need to have, uh, we don't need to, we should, shouldn't say we need to have anything. But what's happening is that that energy is pulling us to become much more conscious and and the unconsciousness world is based on things like conflict and, yes. you know, the old world of conflict, competition, all those things that we sort of grew up, yeah. you know, believing or being told that that's what the world's all about. Well, it's not about that. Yeah. It's about collaboration. It's about cooperation. It's about thriving together. Compassion. Compassion. Yes. yes. And, and, and that's all energy. That's yes. all energy. And, so, you know, that's why learning this year is going to be a really big key for people. So mm. this is the number one thing that I'm reading is that people mm. uh, are being compelled to learn more. Get outside of what you, yeah. you know, thought you believed and just start looking at other people's opinions or thoughts or ideas that might resonate with you. Maybe you don't agree with them, whatever, yeah. but at least see if they resonate with you because you know you can feel people have this feeling it's not like it's one or two people in the yeah. world that know no. how to tune into this right yeah it's no. inherent it's an innate in all of yes us. it is you have to learn how to tune into it that's all that's the key and you know when you say learning i think we have been learning all along the line like we've been learning this doesn't work for us or i don't really want this out of life there must be more out of life and, and more participation i think the learning it has is literally getting into gear now we might see some people only get into the first gear and some people really get up into that fifth gear but i think that it's actionable learning this year of actually being able to do something with it, because I feel that there's a, a certain urgency in, in, I've been feeling the energy field for a long time. I knew something was coming that was going to literally change the world. Didn't know what it was, yeah. but I knew there was a shift coming. Um, as, as I said, that saying was given me four and a half years ago, so long before the pandemic. And it, it, was, it was kind of be prepared because we're gonna to have to guide people. It, they're going to be kind of caught up in the, the static or the chaos or uh, almost the hysteria of energy before they can find the calmness and the meaning of the writer and how to tap into it, how to use it, how to move forward with it. So I think for a lot of us, it was preparing us for the work that we need to do right now, which is helping people tap into that energy productively, uh, compassionately and cohesively to move forward as a, as a more wholesome society. Yeah. And you know, Sarah, that's an interesting interest. I hadn't thought about it this way before, but <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. It's really interesting. The timing of all of this happening, because let's say five years ago, we didn't have the science we have right now right. about how energy is actually influencing everything. And, you know, we didn't have all the stuff. And one of the big buzzwords now is trust the science, right? Well, we actually have science yes, <laughs> yes. that can show people, look, yeah. this is energy. It's all energy. It's all about en energy. And if you're not tapping into your own energy, mm -hmm. you, 
you know, that's the most important life skill you could develop. Yeah. And when you tap into yours and you learn how to manage that in a proper way where you're actually tuning right into the frequencies of the earth. Yes, the earth has a frequency. Oh, every, energy. everything <laughs> has an energy frequency. Absolutely everything. Yes. And, and, and it influences everybody mm -hmm. on it, by the way. Yes. Oh, yes. So if you can manage yours and keep yours where you want it to be, you are just operating in a more coherent way mm -hmm. in, in the world, in the universe, in society. And, and that's what's yeah. being called for now. I mean, just to yeah. be more conscious of walking out the door, being aware of where you are, not just you, but where other people are and tuning into that and, and uh, taking advantage of the, of the gifts that you've been given. You know, one of the things that's interesting that we've heard, I'm sure you've had, heard it a lot, especially, you know, since 2017, people give themselves a label of being an empath, right? Mm -hmm. Well, everybody's empathic. Yes. It's just, are you in tune or not? There are some people where the volume of their empathy is higher than others, but we all should be empathic. And that's, um, and, but not everybody is because you have your narcissistic sociopaths that aren't. Clinically, well, they're true. not. <laughs> but, and we have an, uh, an exponential amount of narcissists that have been on the climb for, for the last few years. But everybody has the capability of being an empath. And it's sort of a question of, are we nurturing it? Yeah. Well, the other thing is that when you, with energy, a big part of it is that, and, and particularly people that, that are, know they're empaths, Mm -hmm. Like I'm in, I've been, in, I've known I've been an empath for a really long time before Since the I day I was anything. born. <laughs> yeah. Well, before yeah. I knew anything about this energy thing, yes. you know, I mean, really was conscious of it. Uh, I could really feel other people's energies in in big ways, especially growing up playing team sports. But, um, you know, what happens is when you learn to work with the energy, when you're empathic and your energy field is not full. It's not operating with the energy that you choose to retain, sustain, and maintain. You're leaving yourself open. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of the things I like to tell people, like I, I, I talk to other energy workers and they'd say, oh, that just as an example, that person was an energy vampire. Right. I'd yes. say, ah, not their fault. No. You're not keeping your energy up. Yes. <laughs> well, it's about balance, isn't it? We've got to keep the equilibrium there. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's it's sort of like my visual is if you've got a glass, mm -hmm. so you got a glass. Let's say it's this big, and you got a third bit of water in it. Right, it's only full of third. You've got two thirds that you can pour more water in. Well, if that glass is full, you can't pour more, pour more water in. It's just mm -hmm. nowhere for it to go. Same with our energy field. Yeah. If our energy field is full, there's no more pouring in. <laughs> you can't so put any more in there. We have to spend that energy productively. Yeah. Right. It, you know, our energy isn't given to us just to be our own generator. It's there to allow us to use our particular gifts that each and every one of us have been done energetically to serve humankind, animal kind, planet kind, but to serve. That's the reason why the energy is there. The more we have, the more we have to give away. It's not about holding it. Yeah. And, you know, we were talking, Sarah, about the, the science and, and we now know that when we're in a coherent state coming from your heart or however you create that, a coherent state of energy, you're actually influencing the energy of the earth. Yes. And your heart beats, the frequency of your heartbeat is the same frequency as the frequency of the earth. So you're connected to that. So you are actually influencing the energy of the earth. And look what and, Mama Earth is doing right now. <laughs> you, know, I mean, you talk about a way to make a difference, right? Mm. Get a whole bunch of people in a coherent state mm. and yeah. you know, technology is not going to change the world. It's consciousness that's going to change the yes, world. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and we can certainly use technology as a tool, but not 100%. a replacement. That is the importance. It's not a replacement. Um, it, and I think it's really, really important that we understand absolutely everything is a frequency, a vibration, an energy field. And as you said, the scientists are beginning to wonder, those people that claim to be spiritual, when we say we're spiritual, that it doesn't mean kumbaya, hippie, 
you know, let's all come together with roses and flowers and all of that. It is actually a state of an energeticness that we live at. And they're beginning to measure that energy and understand that spirituality is a very productive energy and that it is a very kind, giving and caring energy. If we gave more of that a beautiful divine energy to Mother Earth, she wouldn't be having the fits that she's having right now. But she's having it because there's so much anger out there, so much angst out there, that it's it's disrupting her balance. And she's out of balance right now. So it we really do have to elevate our energy, our frequency into a, a more love frequency to balance out Earth. Otherwise, we're going to pay the price for it. Yeah. And, you know, the, I think it actually, in my opinion and what I receive anyway, <laughs> it actually sort of goes beyond that in, in a lot of ways, because mm. think about this. If we're, if our energy, just you and I, just yeah. the two of us, if our energy is having an influence on the earth, yes, the earth is a conductor. Yes. Right. Yes. So what's that mean? Well, it's having an influence on everybody that's right. on the earth. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so so yeah. if we could get more people putting that energy into the earth, the loving energy. Yes. yes. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. And, you know, um, I think more and more people are actually understanding what the universal energy is. Um, you know, how it, the universal and earth energy meets. And, and it really is a, a beautiful sphere of divine energy. And it is the guidance symbol for our compass. And when we allow ourselves to tap into that beautiful energy without dictation, Without saying, well, you've got to do this and you've got to do that, but just allowing and our consciousness already knows what we need to do. And we just go into the flow of that energy and direct it where it needs to go. I think that's when we have the most impact on that because the consciousness is we don't want to force the consciousness. You've got to do this. It's not regimented. It's got to something you are, not just something you do. You have to become that beautiful divine consciousness. Yeah, and, and behavioral scientists call it getting into the state of flow. Yes, yes. And, you know, it doesn't matter what you call it. If it's a state of coherence, a state of flow. Yes. Uh, athletes call it the zone. I like to call it hacking consciousness. I call it knowingness. Like knowingness. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's right. just a state where you actually have access to energy and information that yes. most people don't know how to access right. yet. And when you get into that state, you're much more open to receptivity. Yes. You're going to receive ideas. You're going to receive concepts. You're going to receive things that are good for the whole. You're not going to get ideas that are, you know, generating conflict. Right. You know? no. You're going to get good ideas that are yeah. beneficial for the whole. And, and that's, those are the states that I like to try to, share with people yeah. hey if you can get yourself into those states and learn how to retain sustain and maintain them the world's your oyster exactly I mean, because, because it's you can influence everyone around you and everything around you at the same time <laughs> all in the good 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 vibrations i mean yeah. the beach boys had it right back there in the 60s and uh, you know it it's also you know what we seed how we water and what we nurture is what's going to grow and um, But we put the lens so much on the angst and the anger and the bitterness and the, you know, the betrayal and all of that, that that is what we're feeding. We keep feeding that. And if yeah. instead of we keep, you know, we feed what we would love to see, how we would love to feel, which is more of that cohesiveness, more of the village mentality where everybody brings their gift to the village and that village is as strong as everybody's participation, more into the healing energy we would see that that angst and that anger would go by the wayside because it's not being fed and i don't think we're aware consciously yet is what we feed is what grows and we really have to be very mindful and heartful and soulful and what we are feeding yeah i like to put it um my my saying is you get what you focus on exactly end of story end of story. <laughs> you know that's law of attraction it you is. get what you focus on yes <laughs> period Yes. But yeah, so you're, you're going to get more of what you're exactly what you're talking about. And, and unfortunately, what's happened, and this is part to do with the pandemic, but it was obviously here before the pandemic. And part of that is, is really, it's just momentum. It's all about understanding momentum. 
It's just about understanding momentum. Mm -hmm. And if, if you understand momentum, like, so let's just talk about the people experiencing anger, like you're referring to. That's just momentum. Unfortunately, they don't know how to break that moment. Right. Yeah. And, and so when they get around people, and I, I spent uh, just over four years as a Lyft driver mm -hmm. right? from 27, October 2017 to the end of November in uh, just this past year, 2021. And I'm not sure if there's an entire or if there's a person on the entire planet who had been in direct contact with random people's energy field mm -hmm. than me in that four year period. I mean, I gave over 14,000 rides. That's 14,000 wow. people just jumping in from yes. all over and got all knows where different vibrations <laughs> coming in there. Yeah. <laughs> right into my field. It's yes. right here. You know, yes. I know where that field is. Well, you know, I could tell when somebody's angry, I could mm -hmm. tell, but here's the thing if you know how to manage your energy and you can pick that up, I had probably, Oh, I'd, let's say a dozen people out of 14,000 rides. So pretty good odds. Yeah. That were really just upset with the world for whatever reason. It didn't matter. Right? And that was their energy field. That right? was their energy. Yeah. Well, by the time they got out of my car, every one of them, not one of them didn't say something like, have a great rest of your day, Drew. Thanks mm -hmm. for the ride. It was completely changed. Right. And most of them, I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. They just picked up on, because in their core, yes, in their core, their inner being <laughs> wants to feel that energy. Yes. So if you're holding that energy, that inner being will take over and go. Well, you're, you're taking a, they're taking from the chaos to the calmness. And yeah. in calmness, you have clarity. Boom. Big word, clarity. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing is, if you're around arena that is calm, it automatically appeals to the energy of the other people. Take the deep breath, calm the, the frequency down. Because a lot of people don't realize that they, they're in chaos, they're in static, they're in this hyper energy. And they, they're, they're not channeling it in a way that is being calm. It's hysterical energy. And they're so caught up in it, they just don't know how to get out of it. Right, right. And that's, you know, that's something that you can tune into first thing in the day. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to momentum. Should we just briefly mention momentum and law of attraction? Not briefly, not briefly. I mean, okay. you know, uh, we'll fluidity, momentum, <laughs> energy has to be in flow. It has to be in momentum. It cannot be static. So, yes, yeah. let's talk about it. Okay. So, so most people probably heard the, the term law of attraction, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of confusion around law of attraction. <laughs> <laughs> I manifest a Lamborghini, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So it really just boils down to understanding two things, really. And, and Einstein was the one who said this, everything's energy, right? Mm -hmm. So. That was, yeah. that's physics. It's not yes. philosophy. It's right. physics. It's science. Oh, I mean, look at Tesla. <laughs> I mean, everything he did was energy and, everything. you know, yeah. All his rejections just led to more moral uh, inspirations. Yeah. Oh, it goes on. The list goes yeah. on. I've got oh. them on my website. Where, yes. His, you know, the amount of Aristotle, yes. Socrates. Yes. The, amount, the yeah. people that were in tune with this energy mm -hmm. that changed humanity yes. throughout history is endless. I only yes. list a few, but everyone will recognize mm -hmm. who they are. And what they did was just tap into that. Well, mm -hmm. law of attraction is really a simple law. It's just like gravity. It's a universal law. But you didn't go to school to learn how to uh, <laughs> not use or use gravity, rather. You didn't go to school to learn how not to fall down. In other words, mm -hmm. you didn't have to go to school to learn to not fall up. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone should have gone to school to learn the principles, just mm -hmm. the principles of law of attraction, because it states that which is likened to itself is drawn. So if everything's energy and, and energy, like energy attracts like energy, that's all you need to know. Right. <laughs> so, and, and the momentum point within that law is 17 seconds. So what does that mean? Well, our thoughts, this is another thing that, that I, since I 
drove for Lyft, I had to be able to say these things and come up with these things fast. So I say things in a way that most people will talk about law of attraction don't really talk about much. Mm -hmm. But our thoughts are things. Our mm -hmm. thoughts generate emotions in our body. Yes. Those emotions have different vibrational frequencies. They have different energy levels. Yes. So you got the higher vibrational emotions of love and appreciation, et cetera. Gratitude. And then you got the lower vibrations of, of, you know, depression, anxiety, COVID throw in fear. And then you got most people live pre COVID around worry, frustration, and overwhelm where are sort of at the bottom end of that, that middle of that scale. And if you think a thought, which generates a thought of, let's say worry, for example, mm -hmm. And if you think that thought, it generates that emotion in 17 seconds, you got another one coming, whether you want it or not. Right. Right. And it's just, it's just law. <laughs> yes. So that means you need to be on the right channel so that whatever is coming is being productive and isn't leading you down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, I have a love show on this, uh, this week, which is, is that, you know, love is an everyday thing. It's not just 14th of February. And that love of self is extremely important because when you are in love of self, and I'm not talking egotistical or narcissistic, I'm just love of who you are and why you are. That, love. that is an energy yeah. that then begets and draws another positive energy to you. So if you keep making wrong decisions and getting wrong things, it's the wrong energy you're putting out. So your energy will attract like energy. So if you want to find a relationship that's loving and caring, be loving and caring. It's the same in any other aspect of your life. You, know, you want to be the energy that you are going to attract. And with your 17 seconds of, of thought, positive thinking equals positive living because yeah. you've opened up that channel to those thoughts always being positive and productive. Yeah, and the, and the really good news about that, Sarah, is that when we go to sleep at night, we stop all momentum. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons we sleep. I mean, we need sleep, yes. you know, physiologically regenerate. to regenerate, yeah. rejuvenate, blah, blah, blah. But we don't need near as much as most people think, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so anyway, that's the reason you sleep. So when you first wake up in the morning, there's a little window right there. Mm -hmm. And you are either operating at a pretty neutral state or you may even be up in appreciation and love right at the beginning of the day, unless you go back and grab the thought that had you upset from yesterday. Right. Yes. Or what a lot of people do, go back and grab the thought that had them upset from 20 years ago. Right. Right. <laughs> Why? So that energy is just continuing <laughs> yes. to go on and a go loop and go, and yeah. go just momentum. Well, that's the best time of the day to either start or enhance a meditation practice. Yes. Because now you're allowing yourself to set your tuner. It's kind of like, you know, when I was driving for Lyft, I had a radio tuner in my car, right? And, and if I wanted to listen to 107.1 FM all day long, what was my work? Well, it was just tune my tuner to 107.1 and leave it there. <laughs> you know? I didn't have to do anything. Right. And, and the radio is an actually really good example of law of attraction. Because if those two frequencies don't match, I can't hear what that one's that whatever tower is broadcasting from. If I'm on eighty nine point nine, I can't hear what's on one hundred seven point one, right? Right. Well, if I match the frequencies, I can. Yes, yes. You know, everybody has a downward spiral, and and you know, energies can be low emotionally, physically, spiritually. And is then what do you do to nurture yourself? Because at that point, you know, okay, my energy is low. Do I go and put myself around people with a higher energy to capture that energy? Or do I have to go do some in, into perspective stuff? Or maybe it's just the time that you need to just giving yourself some love, some tender care, uh, because we all get that dip. And it's just a question of how do you turn that volume back up? And we don't want people 
you know, the sugar high energy. We don't want that. You, nope. you, we don't <laughs> see it. We don't see it so much anymore. But very much in the '90s, we saw these big, huge rally type things and rah, 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 networking and all of that. People selling something, and people would just buy into the sugar high and then go home and crash, and then sign up again to come back for another sugar high. And it's you know that is not the energy we're talking about in any realm whatsoever. It is that beautiful flow, that rhythm of energy that is always with you. And that sometimes, like a song, is going to have a crescendo height and then come back down again. And But we don't want the extremes, do we? Because that throws us completely out of balance. Yeah, you can't always be in enthusiasm. Right. right. But when you're there, it feels great. Yes. But that doesn't mean you have to go from enthusiasm to depression. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. We, we don't want those dives. <laughs> no, we just go from enthusiasm to joy. Yes. Or yes. satisfaction. Okay, yes. I'm satisfied yes. now. That's not enthusiasm. Yeah. Just <laughs> but that you're kind satisfied. Of warm feeling of accomplishment or, you know, just a, I'm going to sit with this feeling for a moment. It feels good, you know, riding yeah. that wave, you know, and it's, it's, but everything is, you look at our DNA, the way it's twisted. We look at frequency and the way it moves. Everything is movement, isn't it? It's all got a beautiful pattern. All of it. And that, and again, it goes back to that coherent energy field because mm -hmm. that influences everything in every system in your body is influenced by your heart and, and all of the other systems in your body moving that energy through, you know, they scientists now can measure the telemeters in your chromosomes and mm -hmm. basically tell you how old you are inside. And you may not be anywhere near that, which a lot of people aren't on the outside or in actual age, because we're actually aging now faster than we've ever, we ever have. And a lot of that has to do with stress because mm -hmm. that's exactly what reduces the telemeters. Um, they have little enzyme caps on the end of their, uh, their, their strands. And when you're in stress, that's one of the big things that, that eats those enzymes down mm -hmm. and your telemeters start shrinking. But when your cells divide even, if, for example, if you're operating at a really high level, your, uh, you know, your endocannabinoid system, we'll use that for starters, your endocannabinoid system then is operating and sending these positive neurotransmitters for example. Mm. And if you got positive neurotransmitters going into these receptor sites in your endocannabinoid system, CB1, CB2, and, and serotonin receptor sites, etc., then uh, you're going to feel really good and everything's flowing at a really high level. Well, it also goes right down to your cells. Your cells have yes. receptor sites too. And if, if you're under a lot of stress, well, your cells sort of are taking care of themselves. They're really smart. And if they keep getting bombarded with neurotransmitters, they don't want to experience. Eventually, they're just going to stop producing cells, reproducing cells that have as many receptor sites. In other words, they're not as healthy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But I, I often, you know, the trillions of cells that are in each and any one of our bodies. And if a, you know, a certain cell start breaking down, it's a, it's a domino effect and the whole body starts breaking down. Well, that's the same with society. If we start breaking down, the whole domino effect starts happening, and we, we do see that. And it's, it's, you know, energy is not only our generator that keeps us going and allows us to be and tap into the consciousness. It is what keeps our body healthy, our mind healthy, everything healthy. And talking about stress, virtually who hasn't had some form of stress in their lives, or, and especially globally in the last two years? Yeah. It's been a pandemic of stress. And I've said, you know, we're coming out of the pandemic now. The next demic we're going to have is the emotional, um, which is very much, you know, the, the depression and the mental stress that people have gone through. And, of course, financial as we go through a total a new financial structure of recovery. And it's how we look at stress. You know, you, you can have a stressful situation in front of you, but. As you know, one of the wonderful monks that I, I interviewed, it's that you have got to be the calm amongst the chaos, right? And it's how do you become the calm amongst the chaos? And that is kind of tapping into your energy and holding your energy so that everything else is whirling around you, but you don't get caught up in it. Yeah. And what happens also when you're, when you get yourself into these states of flow, Sarah, you don't, you don't actually attract as many of those stressful situations right. as you as most it's on the do. outside it doesn't penetrate on the inside and yeah you just they don't come around right for, for, you know again it goes, i go back to lift you know that 
that uh, that app is most random app in the world. And as I just mentioned, I gave over 14,000 rides and had a dozen people get in my car that were pissed off at the world for whatever reason. Right. Okay. That's pretty good odds. Yes. <laughs> <You know>? Extraordinary. <laughs> and, and I'm putting that energy out. So yes. I just didn't attract them. You know, right. it doesn't mean that they're not going to show up. They are. Yes. But it's what I do with that. When it happens, how I respond to that. If I keep my energy up, then, you know, that's going to change the entire situation. Well, it that's what I'm pointing. You become the calm amongst the chaos. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So as yeah. people come in with their chaos and they're in your calmness, it helps calm their chaos. Yeah. And if you get people that are in that, in a coherent state together, yes. now you're talking about massive co-creativity. Right. Now you're talking about collaboration yes. events that can change everything because you're going to both get, and there's a book out called Stealing Fire. I, I quoted a lot on my website uh, written by two behavioral scientists and they talk a lot about the state of flow. And one of the big things they talk about is group flow. Mm -hmm. And when you can get, and this was published in 2017. So it's a little outdated information now because they have updated some of the information. But if you get groups of people together mm -hmm. that are in these states of flow, the, the solutions that they can develop yes. are amazing. They're incredible stuff that will change the world because they're not in their own way. They don't have right. a bunch of resistance. They're not an ego, right? That's right, yeah. that's right. And, and, and they'll get ideas because every thought that's ever been thought is still floating around out yes. there. Yes, yes, so, no, nothing is new. It's all, you know, just what you tap into. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 see, we see, you know, certain directors, Spielberg and a few others that, you know, that they're, they're wondrous in the, the movies that they bring because they always are, you know, kind of big. And of course, the, the Star Wars, Lucas and all of that. It is, I think that anything that can be thought up of out of worldly is always stemmed in a, in a truth, in a, a, an energy they've tapped into. And we always find a, a resemblance of ourselves in this out of worldly or metaphysical type world. And it's a, and a connection that we have. And if we don't understand why, and it's just purely because of the frequency and the energy in which they are on, we're attracted to, and we want to resonate at that frequency. And so therefore the language or whatever's happening speaks to us. So the energy is always there. It's always being spoken to us or shown to us, read to us. It's there all around us all the time. So it's, all we need to do is just go with that flow, you know, to reach the, that energy and let it penetrate within us because that's when the healing starts, isn't it? Energy oh, yeah. healing has been around since the beginning of time, but of course it's a new age healing right now. Right. And, you know, people don't understand how literally through energy healing, you can repair the body to completely renewable. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, <laughs> Like I said, getting out of your way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, but it, it, it does take practice and it does mm -hmm. take, you know, some effort. I mean, that's, I think that's one of the things that um, some people are a little reluctant about, you know, besides the fact that, you know, they think, oh, that's metaphysical, you know, airy fairy, mumbo jumbo, whatever they think, but it takes effort. Yes. You have to put in an effort to, to make these kinds of changes. Doesn't it's, it's simple. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But I mean, but each person is also I very much believe that each person is is a gift. You know, it's the discovery of what is our instrument, how do we play it, and which, which orchestra do we join to play it with that yeah. has the most impact. So, you know, you've got some people that are really, really good at, at cellular healing and rejuvenation. You've got some people that are very, very good at healing the mind. And it's that that's your instrument. Right. So yeah. you're all using energy, but you're conducting that energy in a different way, in a more specialized way. And it's that there isn't one size fits all. It's not all about, oh, I'm just going to tap into energy. So now I can heal everything. No, the work is, is that the gift you've been given is the direction you're going to take that energy for that particular outcome. And everybody has their own special gifts. Exactly. Exactly. You know, you, you get people that are good at this part of it, mm -hmm. and good at this part of it, put those two together and now you yeah. got something. You know, so again, well, that's why you're talking to, about the groups. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you when you get the multiple energies with their specialities together or communicating together, sharing that 
energy, the solutions. There is a cure and a solution for everything. 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 Everything, but you know you've got a, you've got a particle of it with this person and a particle of it with that person. All it needs is those energies to come together, and there you have that beautiful solution right there. Yeah, and when you're focusing on these coherent states, states of flow, you're going to find those people. Yes, yes, because again, <laughs> frequency attracts frequency, right? So when you're up on that vibe. You know, they, they call it serendipity and all of that, you know. Or, it, it, yeah, exactly. And, and it's just like, or oh, right time, right place. It's just that when, when your frequency is at the right state, then it will attract the right people. You don't need to do anything other than keep your frequency there and project it out. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people call it coincidence. And I say, mm. well, there are no coincidences, <laughs> only cooperative incidences. Yes, I like that word. <laughs> I couldn't say it, but I like it. <laughs> you know, I, it, it's, it's just the way it works. Yeah. And, uh, and when they start popping up and you notice them, that's when it starts getting fun. Because yes. now you can, you know, one of the things that I like to help people do is set an intention for the day energetically. And basically one of the things I, I help them understand how to set is set an intention to allow their state of allowing to easily and effortlessly unfold before them. Right. Mm -hmm. And then as each step along the way is leading them down the road to their intention, whatever that intention is, the minute they notice it, it's always a good thing because one of the things that I teach also is building your awareness muscle, being yes. aware of what's going on. The antenna. Whenever, <laughs> Yeah, build that antenna so yeah. you are aware, you're tuned in. And when something happens that's leading you down that path towards your intention, give yourself permission to acknowledge it, give yourself yes. permission to appreciate yes. it, and absolutely, absolutely say right out loud, thank you, thank you, thank you. I absolutely appreciate that. <laughs> yes. And, you know, the other thing is don't get caught up in your head because your head has got this dialogue and data in there to question everything. Right. And it's like uh, such as the idea comes to you. Well, how do you know that? Why do you know that? Where's the verification for that? What's the this, the da, 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 da. And the next thing you know, you've talked yourself out of anything. Instead, you know, this is why um, my knowingness perspective is that it, it, it goes into our, our gut, our soul, soul talk. And, and it speaks in a way that resonates and opens up the heart. And it ignites the spirit into action. And the mind will know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. But if we come only from the mind, but coming from uh, programmed information uh, rather than coming from soul wisdom to know how to use that information. Yeah. And, and your heart is not your spirit guide. Your, no. I'm sorry. Your head is not your spirit no, guide. Exactly. Your mind is not your spirit no. guide. No. When you're, you, know, you have guides. Everyone has guides all around them. They'll, you know, if you'll tune into them, they'll guide you. They'll lead you. They're interested in what's going on. And we don't have to go too far down that road. But I think most people understand, though, they've got little intuition things going on. That, yes. You know, I heard my mom. She's been passed for five years yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, that's you did. Yes, you did. You <laughs> definitely did. Just because the vessel is gone doesn't mean the, you know, the energetic spirit is gone. No. Yeah, they're just in a different frequency. Yes, exactly. Ready to and, tap in anytime you want. Yeah. And, and it, it's so it's not like it's, you know, earth shattering stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just they're just at a different frequency and they communicate at a different frequency. Right. Right. Some and people, there is no time. You know, time is no. is is an earthly linear thing. There is no time in the spirit world, in the energetic world. Energy is just energy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, meditation uh, basically helps to influence a state that the guys in the book call stir, which is an interesting because you've just mentioned no time, selflessness, timelessness, mm -hmm. um, effortlessness, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, richness, mm -hmm. right? So when you're in that state, and, and these things are coming up, you just know it, right? Yes, there's, there's no body, no person, no th there's nobody can coordinate that stuff. It just is. It just happens. It, it just, just is. is. Yeah. And, you yeah. Know, I have so many of those stories from Lyft where I would just be thinking something like a, a perfect example. I remember when it first came up and I had just started for Lyft. I was maybe doing it for about uh, a couple of weeks and I had just really 
put the finishing touches on some of the stuff that I teach and really unique kind of energy working stuff with law of attraction, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I realized right away that lift was going to be sort of practice for me. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to get all these insights and I'm like, okay, well, this will be fun. But one day I was driving from one side of town to the other. It just was one of those mornings. I just kept finding these rides from one side of town to the other. And, and uh, an airport run for us was a, was a good run. And I remember driving back into town. And I'm thinking, you know, now would be a good time for an airport run. Boom. I got hit yeah. for a ride. Literally that second. Yeah. I got hit for a ride. I pull up in front of their house and guess where they're going mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> to the airport. Yes. But that is, that's tuning in. Yeah. Right. And, and we have that, you know, it's like so people say, I always find a parking spot. Yeah. What, what you've done, you've gone in that into the parking spot, you're, you're available for me. Yeah. And one will come up. And um, again, we, we like to allow our minds to get in the way. Well, you know, that's just luck. Yeah. You know, I was just lucky at the moment. And it's that, no, it's, it's, it is a, a projection of your energy. And yeah. when you're in tuned into that energy, that, you know, it's the, you're amplifying it. Yeah. If it, it's luck, if it happens once, right? Yeah. If it happens a few thousand times, yes, that's it's not a, luck. It's beautiful pattern. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, people are beginning to understand what energy is. You, you know, the Emoto experiment with the waters, the glasses of yeah. water. Yeah. And I had uh, Yashiyuki, his assistant, because Emoto died and he came on a couple of times and they've literally measured waters around the world and in certain areas where they're just simple villages that live in that beautiful divine energy and the measurement of the water is just you know literally crystallized into beautiful energy and then other areas where there's worn torn or anger or discord and you know how dark and dense it goes we are 70 percent water in our body yep. and it is very very imperative that we feed ourselves good vibrations otherwise we start contaminating our waters which creates dis-ease which manifests disease. And we are seeing so much illness out there today that is all coming from that dis-ease and disconnect from our own beautiful energy. Yeah, a hundred percent, you know, and, and a lot of that has to do with nutrition, obviously. Yes. Um, you know, what, we're, what you, your, your, what you put in your body <laughs> yes. matters. Yes. <laughs> it's just it does. whether it's energy also, or it's, food. Yeah, it's also the, 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 what you put in your body. It's in the, in the gratitude that you eat it in is in the vibration that is also going to feed you too. Yeah, that's what I, I was yeah. just talking about. Yeah. Whether it's the energy or yeah. the food or yeah. both. Yes. It's, it's, uh, it, it has an influence on the functioning of your body. It does. And most people, you know, I mentioned earlier, the endocannabinoid system, most people, including a lot of health professionals, have no idea what that is. No. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's important. It's a big deal. It's, yeah. It manages your entire, every other system operates and functions based on your endocannabinoid system yeah. operating in an optimal level. So, and you have more of an influence on that operating at an optimal level than most people would, would even fathom. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, I had this wonderful woman on for five years with me, um, Suma Nathan. She was on my wise health show, which is still available there. And uh, she was, she called herself snake oil woman because back in the sixties, yeah. <laughs> the alternative would have, you know, it's, it's, it's snake oil woman, uh, a wonderful woman, just an encyclopedia of wonderful knowledge. And she would always say the, uh, the system of the kidney, colon and liver are the most important organs in your body and you keep them healthy and functioning they'll keep the rest of the body healthy and functioning and that what you put in your stomach and the way you put it in the mindset that you put it in is also going to have an effect on the body and we were inclined to just ignore i mean it's, it's going out to the show of self-love is that when we actually love who we are, why we are, what we're here to do, what is our what is our contribution? You know, what are we here to serve? How are we here to serve one another? When we step into that beautiful presence and essence of ourselves, we've stepped into that beautiful energy that will always have our backs, will always have our health, that will always have that that generation of living in that purpose. And it's very important that we actually get there. And a lot of that 
discord and not allowing the right energy in is coming from people who feel a lack of self-worth or a lack of identity and certainly a lack of self-love. Yeah, and it, I call it disempowerment. Yeah. You know, they just, they don't realize how powerful they actually are, which is right. why, you know, my website is the name of it is. Right. But, you know, most, you, we are powerful. We are yes. very, very powerful as human beings. And most people just don't understand or, or comprehend how powerful that encompasses. In other words, what powers you actually have. Mm -hmm. And, and more, more and more people are waking up to it. It's great. You know, I mean, because uh, what we talked about at the very beginning is we're moving from an unconscious based yeah. society to a consciousness based society. And the ones that are going with that flow, you know, you're waking up to your power. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right on. We just right. need to help the ones that are yeah. not quite coming along yet. Just, we don't need to do anything necessarily. We just have just to be. 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 Just be. Yes. It's by in our beingness, in our beautiful divine energy, we're sending that vibration out to them. Yeah. Right. And, and either their antennas are going to pick it up or not. And all we can do is just hope they open up enough to let it in. But yeah. the more and more they're around that energy, the more and more those antennas, even if they've been buried, are going to start coming up and saying this. I, I like that feeling. I want to start yeah. feeling it. And we know that anger begets anger, but we also know that love begets love. Yeah. You know, when you when you see somebody doing something of service or saving somebody or serving somebody that makes a difference. You know, um, the greatest gift you can give is the gift of, of yourself in, in some form of service. And you don't do it well, for what they're going to do to you. You do it because the gift back to you is knowing that you've made a difference in their lives. That's yeah. the energy exchange, right? Yeah. I, I helped you shift from wherever you are or whatever you needed. Now you're in a higher energy plane. That's already a gift back to me. Yeah, I, I got a great, I hate to go keep going back to Lyft, but I've got so many. No, no, but my really, 14 pounds of Lyft, you've got some stories, yeah. <laughs> I, I got a great story on that, keeping that coherent energy field and influencing other people. I mean, I got lots, but this one really was happened early on, and uh, it's how I got my moniker, which anyway, so I was driving uh, one day, and I picked up this gal at the University of Michigan Hospital, and it's about 20 feet from the door to my car. And it took her almost the entire four minutes to get to my car. She had a walker and mm -hmm. very low energy. And I saw her walking. I knew who it was. I mean, in terms of, I, she, I saw her walking towards my car. So I knew that was my ride. So I put her walker in my trunk and I pulled up where we were going. And when I got in the car, I heard her on the phone, could barely hear her, but she said, I'm going to need some help when I get home. And she was really low energy. And so I pulled up where we were going and I was going to have her in the car for an hour and 20 minutes. So I thought to myself, well, this will be interesting. Again, I, I was about a month in, so I was just starting to play with all this stuff a little bit. And when I get out on the highway, if I'm not stuck in traffic or dodging traffic or whatever, I can just focus. I can yes. do that anyway. But when I'm on a highway, it's like psh, whatever I want yeah. to focus on, I focus. And so I just turned up the volume of the energy. I just turned it up way high, consciously, didn't say anything, Get stuck in traffic 20 minutes in, and I could feel her energy. I actually saw her posture in the rearview mirror sort of come from going like this mm -hmm. to sitting mm -hmm. up a little bit. And, and she started asking me questions about this, the traffic, and I thought, okay, here we go. You know, I mean, I knew I wasn't going to talk to her about energy, but if she's opening up to, for a conversation, I'll participate. So she... Uh, then started asking me questions about driving for Lyft. And since I knew I wasn't going to talk to her about energy, I just started telling her funny story. Mm -hmm. I just started saying, you know, this happened to me when I was younger and I thought this was funny. And we got it, got her laughing. And then she started telling me funny stories. So for the next hour, mm -hmm. we were just telling funny stories back and forth. Right. Right? So I pull up in front of the, her daughter's house. So I'm pretty sure it was the first person on the other end of that phone. Right. I'm going to need some help. And she jumped out of that backseat faster than she's probably moved in years. Right. And grabbed her walker and almost jogged around the front of my car with one hand on the walker going, okay, Drew, thanks for the ride. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> yes. I was laughing so hard all the way out to the highway. And I thought to myself, man, I can't wait to tell my 
law of attraction friends about this story. Yes. And so sure enough, the next week we had a potluck dinner and I was telling that story to some friends. And one of the guy, one of the guys paused and uh, said, that's a great story. I said, yeah, you know me, Kevin, I, I like to share a little uplifting energy whenever I can. And he goes, did you hear what you just said? I said, yeah, you know me, I like to share a little uplifting energy whenever I can. And he goes, Drew, you're an uplift driver. <laughs> True. <laughs> and I thought, I'm taking that. Yeah. <laughs> so I made signs, Sarah. I made signs. Mm. They came to me in my meditation one time, and I made about three different versions of them because I started putting stuff in my car about energy. <laughs> and I made these signs and said, Hi, I'm Drew. I'm your uplift driver. And and those signs had so many great comments yeah. about, you know, uplifting energy. Yes. You know, people going, oh, man, I'm so glad I'm in your car because I'm I'm a really anxious flyer and I'm on my way to the airport and I'm yeah. not anxious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And that that's the point, isn't it, though, is that if you just be, uh, you become that beautiful essence, that beautiful, lovely vibrational essence. It will have the effect on the people around you as it's meant to. Yeah. Not as we dictate it to be as it's meant to. They're going to receive it in the way they're meant to receive it digest it and use it in the way they're meant to all you can do is share that beautiful energy to ignite theirs and then what they do from that there is up to them yeah. you know we're a society that likes to point fingers it's this fault government fault that fault we've got three pointing back at us okay where's our accountability where's our self-responsibility where is our participation in making this a better world and if we step into that higher, beautiful elevation of our energy, our divine energy that is there, we realize that we're the beacon of that light and energy for others that ignites it in others. And when if it ignites in them and they step up into a higher energy and a higher plane, it then resonates on the people they know and then they know and then they know. And this is how the beautiful ripple effect happens. But we've got to be that light. We've got to be that energy in order for it to have the Im impact on everyone else. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and it takes, a, like I said, a conscious effort. Yes. It's not that it's hard because <clears throat> no. it's not hard. No. I mean, it's easy to go get snapped or triggered by something. And right, you could, you know, there's nothing wrong with you being angry. You know, you've got to spend that emotion. Don't, don't suppress it, but just let it be over, right? Let it be over. And get back in sync with your energy. Um, we, we really, people need to learn how to take the breath and let it go. Is this important right now? Do I have to feed that energy right now? I am upset or I'm angry. Yes, I understand that, but do I need to go there? And, you know, consciously have that talk with yourself and go, who does it serve? And you're going to hear no one, no one, no one. And you go, okay, fine, I can let it go. But yeah, we don't again, know how to let it go. No, and, and but if you, here's the thing. We just talked about it a little while ago. If you can catch that before 17 yes. seconds, you got no momentum. Right, right. <laughs> it's a lot easier. <laughs> yes, so it, it is, it don't dwell on stuff, right? Yeah. You know, you don't dwell on energy. You just are energy. Yeah. But what we dwell on are the things that aren't working. Well, let's concentrate and feed the things that are working because then everything else will then start working better. Yeah. And what most people do, like you just said, most people, when something happens, you know, I mean, you and I don't go through life and everything just lines up for us no. and everything's hunky dory and we go no. home and we go, have, Oh, it was a great day every yeah. day. <laughs> you know, no. it doesn't That's the kumbaya impression of what yeah. life is. No, yeah. it's, it's not that way. <clears throat> well, there's two things to understand about that. Number one, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't know what we do want unless we know what we don't want. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. So anytime you get some contrasting experience, you just got to go, oh, well, there's something to learn more about what yes. I do want. So yes. if that's the case, you got to have that awareness muscle yes. and go, okay, if that's what I don't want, then this is what I do want. And if you focus on what you do want, this energy goes away Yeah, because it, you can only focus on one energy at a time. You can't focus on two energies at a yeah. time. And, and, you know, what you do want, the universe will always get you, give you what you really need. Yeah. Right. But if we don't paint the picture, it's um, 
you, you've got to give the universe the feeling and the picture of what you really do want and why you want it, because the universe is going to give you that image. So if you put a list of, well, I don't want all of this, and that's, you know, and you've got the emphasis on that, the universe is going to give that. But if something comes up, you know, I don't want that, then that means you've dismissed it before the universe has got it. Yeah, you don't know, right? You don't right. know what you don't know until you know it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. We, we also, we, we sell ourselves short on our own knowingness is that we are so beautifully flawsome. We also are so incredibly capable. And until we're willing to explore what we can do and just be open to uh, try something new, we have absolutely no idea what we're capable of. That's right. We restrict ourselves. We limit ourselves. We're defined by somebody else's piece of paper or judgment of us. Throw all of that out. That's in that 17. Get rid of that. That doesn't serve you. I don't know what I can do until I try it. Yeah. And that's, that goes back to what we were talking about at the very beginning. Again, 2022 is about opening yourself up to learning experiences. Yes. Try things. Try yes. things. Don't yes. just go, oh, I can't do that or oh, that's not for me. Or, oh, it'll never happen. It'll never yeah. happen. Yeah. Whatever. You know, open yourself up. Say, oh, you yeah. know, that sounds interesting. I, I think I'd like to try that. Or that sounds interesting. I think I should look that up on Google. I'll give you a perfect example of that. <laughs> Although I, I'm, I'm in tune. So, I mean, if I get an impulse, I go. <laughs> you know, yeah. if something's yes. strong enough, I'm looking it up or I'm picking up the phone or I'm doing whatever it is I'm, I'm getting this impulse on. But this weekend, I just got the impulse to look up coherent energy coming out of my meditation. Just look up two words, coherent energy. And there was an answer right there in front of me on the right. computer screen that I've been looking for for, I don't know, six months. <laughs> and you probably didn't even know what you were looking for. No. Because no very often we're looking for something. I'm looking for that clarity or I'm looking to understand this. Yep. And you don't quite know how to pinpointing google what you want because you're not quite sure what you're looking for but if you you put that energy out there that i am seeking right and that energy yeah. is out there the channel like turning the dial that's yeah. why i don't like digital i like turning the dial yeah. you know going in the the one and a half there uh, it will up the channels open this is yeah. what you what you're looking for right yeah. and it's there but sometimes we've just kind of got to switch the dial a little bit in order to be able to get to the knowledge that we seek yeah, and that's and that's tweaking, right? Yes, it's tweaking with the energy. Yes. It's tweaking with all the stuff that you have access to, and all all that takes is practice. Yes, it practice. well, it's you know we're very good <laughs> at um, living old programs that do not serve us anymore that are completely obsolete. If we are consciously looking at those programs and saying delete, you're you're outdated. You're slowing my computer down. You're gone, and and we insert different practices different mindset, different heart soul sets into that. And we repeat those over and over again. They become the new pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all about momentum. Yes. <laughs> you know, exactly. there, there's, a, there's that word again. Yep. If you generate because momentum. It, yeah, and, and, it, and you don't even have to think about it because now it, it is a part of who you are. It's just automatic. Yes. Just automatic. But, you, but to get there, you have to repeat, repeat, repeat until it becomes something that's so such a part of you that now you're on to the next thing. Yeah, that's right. And, and it's, it's interesting when, you know, you suggest to people like I, I, I suggest, I'm sure you probably do too. Hey, you know, if you meditated uh, for 15 minutes in the morning for the next month, um, you'll find that it's probably going to dramatically influence posit in a positive way your life. Mm -hmm. You open to it, and, you know. Most people say, I don't have time. Right. Well, if you don't have time to meditate for 15 minutes in the morning, then you need to meditate for an hour because you're too busy. Right. Exactly. <laughs> the thing is, if it's important to you, you will make time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that part of, you know, what we're talking about here with, with our energy and, and the energy that other people are flowing, um, you know, we're inspiring i think yes this is probably the best word inspiring more and more people that we come in contact with to want to have that energy so the more people that we go out into the world and 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 have keep our energies up maintain our frequencies the way we want to maintain sustain and maintain them and just interact with people 
Yes. Or people are just going to say to themselves, you know, I like being around that person. Mm -hmm. And that's you know, I, I always I refer to when Harry met Sally, I'll have what she's having. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. When you're around that's somebody right. of good vibrations, you want to be around them. They uplift yeah. you, yeah. right? They, they, they tune in your own beautiful energy. You feel better for being around them because it's igniting the energy in, inside of you that makes you feel better within you. So, yeah. yeah, the more energy begets positive energy. It's just make sure that it is, the, you know, the positive thinking was positive living. Make sure it's positive energy, which is important. Yeah, and, you know, discussions like this are, 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 are perfect uh, tools. Yes. Um, because basically all, we're telling people things that they already know. I mean, most, a lot of things. Repetition gathers right. momentum. <laughs> well, again, you know, people have had the experience of being around people that they just think to themselves, man, I just like being around that person. Yeah. But they don't put two and two together and right. put an X on the spot. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's the spot. That's right. where you want to be. That Use that as your inspiration because that, that makes sense. That's where your objective is. So if you're out there, and more people that are coming around you go, man, I really like being around that person. Pay it forward. Don't exactly. Just go pay it forward, pay it forward, pay it forward. Exactly, exactly. You know, um, good, good, good vibrations uplift all of us. And when we are uplifted, we step into our meaningful purpose. We become that beautiful service that helps society, that in turn is a gift back to us. And, it, and you, you know, if you're not getting up every morning with a love of life, of a love of who you are with gratitude in your heart for another day of opportunity to really live a beautiful, enriched, abundant life, and then you're missing out. And you all can get there if you're just willing to raise that frequency up higher, lift up that vibration, step into it, and make it a pattern that becomes a momentum in your everyday life. Yeah, it's, and it, that's about establishing the pattern. Just one little quick thing. It's a pet peeve of mine. I'm Sorry, I work with energy. So as opposed to gratitude, what I, I like, and not that it's, it's nitpicking a little bit, but I like appreciation as opposed to gratitude. There's only one reason. And because and, they sort of mean the same thing. Yeah. A lot of times, though, gratitude has an end of the stick that's not necessarily that positive. So when you're, when you're working with energy, you really want to be clear on the energy. A lot of times when people say, I'm grateful for this, the underlying energy is because I don't have this anymore. Right. Whereas if you say, man, I appreciate that. Appreciate not comparing it. Uh, right. There's no negative thing. Plus, just think of the definition of the word. Appreciation, appreciate. It adds value to. Right. So well, it grows. Yeah, I, haven't looked, I haven't looked at that before. So that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. So I, I hear that a lot. People say, oh, you got to be grateful. Yeah, okay, but just know that that could hold some negative energy yes. on one, one end of that stick that may be a sticking point. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. I hadn't thought about that, and I shall take that into consideration for sure. Now, can you tell us what you are offering people, um, you know, what services you're offering people, and how sure. people can get hold of you? Sure. So um, what I teach um, are a series of techniques that – sort of combination of things that I've learned over my lifetime. So I'm not going to get into a lot of details, but they're uh, it, the base of the meditation technique or aspect that I teach is really the silver mind method. And uh, when I first learned how to meditate, which was oh, probably 12 years ago now, that's what I learned. I learned the yeah. silver mind method. And um, when I started tuning into uh, different energies, just because of some, I have a background in quantum, a little bit of a background in quantum physics. I have a bigger background in neuro-linguistic programming. Mm -hmm. And as I started to understand uh, the law of attraction a little more, I started bringing in some of these techniques that I borrowed from all of these other tech, you know, sciences yep. Yep. and, and develop these techniques that basically represent sort of a, a conscious ability to, as opposed to like a mindless meditation mm -hmm. it's an active meditation where you're actively bringing in the frequencies that you choose mm -hmm. to retain sustain and maintain all day long and and you're actively then basically grounding those in and merging your physical body 
with those frequencies. So you're allowing your whole body to operate at more optimal levels. And then there's some energy techniques where I teach people how to get right into the right into that energy of the earth, put that energy right into that energy of the earth and allow that to spread and expand. And um, basically it's allowing people to, first of all, the first uh, course is about getting into what scientists call the state of flow. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm still working on some of the 2.0 and 3.0, but we're going from there up. So <laughs> the state of flow is the beginning. Right. But that's what, you know, we need to let that energy flow. It, it is like the wind. It needs to be free. Um, it needs to express itself. It needs to spend itself. It needs to rejuvenate itself. So, you know, that energy is something that you can't just contain. You will explode. It, it's something that needs to be in a momentous flow of sharing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, so it's, it's tuning yourself to the coherent energy. It's tuning mm -hmm. yourself to all the stuff that, that you choose to retain, sustain, and maintain all day long. And it just makes it easier to go through your day when, when you've, you've tuned yourself, like I talked about with the radio tuner. Yeah. Um, you know, you, the first day, you're not going to walk out the door and be a hundred percent successful with it, but right. the more you do it, yes. the better you get at it. And, yes. Repetition. And, yeah. Right. Repetition. And literally within, a, within 30 days, of, of doing this, just some small things <laughs> within 30 days, you'll have a completely different influence on your life and you'll notice all of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not like it's not going to show up. You're going to go, well, what's going on? <laughs> and, well, and more than that, people are going to say to you, what's different about you? <laughs> yes. 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 And, and, you know, all people that are willing to go through the process uh, basically their own kind of recovery or self-discovery, uh, their own ignition of their own energy, you know, all have then stepped into their beautiful, meaningful purpose. And not one of them would ever look back and wish say, I wish I was still over there. Every single one of them is living in their light and they're loving it. Yeah. And, you know, I think what I've found from experience, because I'm probably one of them, the, the people who have had, let's call them the most negative experiences in their lifetime are the best at them. Oh, the best teachers are those that have gone through it. Absolutely. Always. Because they, they understand, they know how to address your pain, and the, the, but they are an example of what you can achieve if you are willing to go through the process of your own self-discovery, your own healing, and your own ignition of your own beautiful energy. Yeah, I think in a lot of ways, all the, let's call it, for lack of a better term, success that we've experienced in the unconsciousness-based society that we're coming out of, it's actually had some people not being as open to what you and I are talking about mm -hmm. because they have been so successful just being unconscious. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. A little you bit know. like the Matrix, but <laughs> it's another yeah, topic. 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny, this past summer, I, I don't watch a lot of TV, but one day I decided to take a day off and all three matrices were yeah. on right in a row. Well, and it, some said, sit down and watch this. <laughs> yeah, so watch the new one. It, it's really good, the new one as well. Um, yeah, yeah you, you have to have seen the others. You have to be a matrixer to, to understand the set, okay. this one, but it is a good one. Uh, yeah. They do it very, very well, very cleverly. So, yeah. Um, and, it, you know, you, the thing is about those type of things I was talking about, the people that have that wonderful imagination that take us to these other worlds, we always see our own reality in it. We always see our own possibilities or our own struggle in it. And it is, an, you know, inspiration begets invitation. It invites us to go, well, we, you know, maybe I'm courageous. Maybe I'm a hero. Maybe I can step up and be the hero of my own life and, you know, and just raise that vibration because don't sell yourself short. We're just incredibly impactful if we just step into the right energy and decide to be now how do people get hold of you oh that's uh easy uh, my website is you are powerful beyond measure.com all spelled out you are powerful beyond measure.com and and that's what we were just talking about everybody has this ability everybody's this powerful it's not like you and i have the corner on the market right, <laughs> right? It's just that you, you, it just takes practice. You have to understand the principles. They're not hard to understand. You just have to understand them. 
and and understand the principles of energy and understand the principles of law of attraction and understand the principles of your brain and you know all these different things not hard to understand they're right you know, all the information's there and so you are powerful beyond measure.com is the best way to get a, a hold of me and and learn more about these techniques that i teach and the background on the techniques and some of the people that have have tuned into these states of flow that have absolutely changed you know mankind throughout history in in very positive ways right exactly i also invite you to you know uh look at you are powerful beyond measure.com slash blogs his his um, wonderful articles he's also on facebook but it will be you are the letter you are powerful mm -hmm. beyond measure um and then also he has um uh you are powerful beyond measure.com uh transiting is it uh, so I haven't got my glasses on. Trinity, Trinity, it, it, Trinity business, blessing. business blessing, right? Yeah, that's that's our uh, nonprofit uh, organization, and so we've got a setup there where we can work with organizations uh, that are uh, nonprofits and uh, help them raise funds on an ongoing basis, and it's all centered around uh, creating health. Right. And so there's, we have, without getting into a lot of detail, basically we have a, a, um, a site where we give away free memberships. All the courses in that site are all about eating properly, supporting your immune system. We have, mm. you know, mental health issues in there, depression, anxiety. We have uh, meditation, Zen. We have anything you can think of re regarding health there's course related stuff in there vegetarian vegetarian diets keto diets vegan and, mm -hmm. yeah vegan so um that course we give away to the members of the nonprofit for free Excellent. and with within that site we recommend some really high end uh specific uh nutritional supplements that have been very very well vetted no junk this is very high end stuff and anytime someone who's a member of the church or whatever nonprofit, whenever they order product, we give the nonprofit Excellent. A, a retail profit for every time they order. So it's an ongoing fundraiser, which is why we call it Trinity um, Blessing, Business Blessing, because it actually encompasses not just the nonprofit, it encompasses all of the Trinity within a community. It's a mm -hmm. community oriented thing where we're promoting health and we're promoting spirit, you know, not necessarily spirituality as much as we're talking about what you and I yeah. talked about, but we are promoting spirituality as well. Quantum and, spirituality. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's all about energy. Yes. And, and entirely. This whole thing, all of it's about energy and the, the, the Trinity business blessing fits in with the, with the nonprofit energetically. It fits in with the community because everyone, is interested in, you know, should be interested in maintaining yes. better health these days. Yes. So, um, you know, it's a fun project. We just kicked it off. We're just getting started, but uh, it's so far in the early stages, everything's going well. So wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming on and sharing with us. You know, we, we are all beautiful energy. The more that we step into understanding that absolutely everything is energy and that when we tap into the energy, we are tapping into our solutions our clarity, our meaningful purpose, and also raising up that frequency to a higher level of love where we only know kindness, consideration, compassion, and cohesive collaboration with one another. And it's a good place to be. Yeah, it certainly is. I like to say that I, I have four main intentions every day, be an uplifter, positive influencer, co-creator of mutually beneficial relationships, and a conscious conduit of connection and collaboration. Exactly. All good four points. All good certainly. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and it just is a question of us changing our pattern, changing our minds and feeding a, a totally different vibration. That's all. Yeah. Changing That's channels. That's, That's it. That's it. That's it. Thanks so much, Drew. Thank you, Sarah. I really appreciate it. It was a great conversation. I had a lot of fun. I appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. So, folks, we need your energy. We need you to step into that because when you do, you become part of the solution that serves this planet and all that's on it. So understand you are energy. Everything around you is energy. Just turn up your volume, okay? Turn up your volume on your energy. And when you do, you're going to see your life change so completely. Until next time, bye for now. 
We hope that you enjoyed the show right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. Please tune in to our selfdiscoverymedia.com slash shows and you will see all the other genres that we have from you. Every week on Tuesday, we bring you new shows from illuminating people. If you know someone that should be interviewed, please contact us at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com. Now stay tuned for your next show.